Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Take Two Podcast. All of your Hollywood news, TV, movie reviews, and of course, my Take Two. My name is Brian. I'm your host here at Take Two Podcast. Welcome to episode 271. Thank you, folks, for listening, for joining, for subscribing, for downloading all the good stuff here at Take Two Podcast. Uh, it is great to have all of you folks on board, and we have a great, I don't know why I'm emphasizing great, uh, show for you guys today. Four reviews. Four reviews. Spider-Man No Way Home. That's, of course, going to lead things off. I will have a Spider-Man uh, review and then a spoiler section. I will give you folks plenty of warning before we get into said spoilers. Uh, but we will have a bit of both for those who have not seen it yet. The ones under a rock. And uh, the rest of the folks uh, waiting it out a little bit. Then there will be spoiler sections. So you guys can fast forward other time times. We also have Succession Season 3 that wrapped up last weekend. I finally caught up. Going to chat about all three seasons of Succession, especially this most recent season. Swan Song with Mahershala Ali, Naomi Harris, Glenn Close. That movie also came out on Apple+. Plus. Got to check out that bad boy. And I finally wrapped up Shrink Next Door, which dropped its final episode last week as well, over also on Apple. Apple dropped a lot for us this week, and I got to catch up. If you didn't notice all the S's, Spider-Man Succession, Swan Song, Shrink Next Door, a bunch of S's for today. So episode 271 full of the S's. We have our giveaway winner. Big prize. We have, we will announce that later on after the box office so that way we know who won the big huge prizes that Take Two Podcast is giving away to one winner out there and we have said winner. We have our poll result that had a Spider-Man theme. We have some pretty good casting, a couple of decent names out there in the casting couch realm. Uh, a fun story time a little bit later on. A What's in the Glass makes a return this week. A little holiday spirit for you folks. Uh, the news of course, DC, Marvel and because it is beginning to look a lot like it is Christmas. It's not looking like Christmas. It is Christmas, baby. This week, uh, I'm going to give you my top five Christmas movies. My favorite five Christmas films. We may have some honorable mentions in there while we're at it. Why the heck not? Because there's so many to choose from. But thank you guys. Thank you for joining Take Two Podcast. Uh, if you're ready, I'm ready because this is going to be a bit of a lengthy show. We might break the hour mark. I almost guarantee it. I don't want to guarantee that. But. Here we go, rock and roll. Let's lead things off as we normally do with the box office. Here it is, folks. What numbers do you want to hear? The big winner of the weekend was obviously going to be Spider-Man. Sorry, Encanto. You did not hold on to that spot. Sorry, West Side Story. You didn't jump back up there like I jokingly predicted last week. Spider-Man was going to be your big winner. Everybody knew that from the get-go. Uh, if you follow us on socials, Instagram, Facebook, uh, what are they called? Twitter, anything to that realm. You know, I was posting throughout the week, early ticket sales look good. Uh, I posted my own personal theaters uh, were sold out from the 8 to 10. They have five showings from the 8 to 10, 30 time slot. All of them sold out for the most part. And that was just Friday night, Thursday. Anyway, so we knew the numbers were going to be good. They put it in 4,300 theaters. Good is an understatement because this thing made $253 million domestically over the weekend. That is good enough for third place all time. All time, all time, $253 million opening weekend, all time, third place in the middle of, I mean, I don't know if you folks noticed, like, I hate to still say in the middle of a pandemic because we keep like, we're almost out of it. And then no, every time we think we're out, uh, but there was a huge tick, huge uptick this past week in, in, uh, COVID cases in shutdowns. Uh, I know schools everywhere shut down things. Extracurricular activities were shut down lines for people getting tested, contracting cases like this week. I think the Thanksgiving holiday may, might've then caught up to a lot of folks. And so there was a huge take. So anyway, in the middle of the pandemic, this movie drops $253 million. I, I wonder, man, I, so here's the, here's the wondering factor. If we weren't having said pandemic, would it have made more? Yes. Or because we're in a pandemic, people were itching so much to go see a movie. Finally, they found the film that they would go and brave the crowds and brave the disease with. And this was said movie. So maybe that gave more people to go. Regardless of the reasoning, Spider-Man No Way Home, $253 million domestically. Here we go. Not to belabor the point more, but $587.2 million dollars worldwide this thing is a cash cow uh it is the number one movie of 2021 duh right uh, that's obvious it's already made that how about this folks it's the number one movie of 2021 total not opening weekend total yeah i said that right 224 right now is 
how much money Shang-Chi has made. And that's the most money any movie has made in theaters in 2021 in the theaters. $224 million, a phenomenal number. Spider-Man No Way Home has now defeated that in three days, one weekend. $253 million bucks, and it is not slowing down. It will not slow down. I've had extensive conversations. Roy from the Realm, you're going to hear his voice next weekend about how word of mouth is going to dominate this film. I'm going to have a lot about to, a lot to say about this in my review, but I will say this, a little bit of a spoiler, and if I liked the movie or not, of the other seven Spider-Man movies that have come out with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield in the past, I loved some of them, very much so. But not once do I remember thinking as I left said theater, I have got to go see that again. I have never left the theater like, what are the showtimes tomorrow, just in case I can sneak in and grab another viewing. This movie I did. This movie, halfway through, my daughter and I learned to each other, leaned into each other, and said, I want to see it again. And we weren't even done yet. We'll talk about it in the review. I will save more of that for later. So word of mouth is going to dominate this. Repeat viewings is going to dominate this. Christmas weekend. Here's what I want to look at going forward with this Christmas weekend where you normally get a bunch of cash. Now, it has competition. We'll talk about it going forward. It has a lot of competition going forward. This is the longest box office segment of all time. What is its drop-down percentage-wise going to be week one to week two, right? Normally, normally you get like a 50 to 60% drop-off, right? Obviously, $125 million next week will be phenomenal, and that's a 50% drop. What if it beats that? What if it beats that, that 50% drop, and it's only like a 37% drop? Because now we have Christmas week. Now we have Christmas weekend. Now people are off and and you usually get a big, 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 big boost for the box office Christmas weekend, right? I'm very intrigued. Like this was the most excited I've been for a box office in two years. In two years, folks, this has been the most. Like we used to do a box office challenge with multiple people and and it would be exciting to see what movie got made what money. And I was very excited for that. I loved when we did that. That was a blast. I'd love to bring that back sometime. But this is the most I was. And now. I'm really excited to see what happens next week. Okay, we will talk about it going forward, the amount of competition that it has in the theaters and at home to watch. I'm very intrigued. $253 million. Congrats to Spider-Man No Way Home. We will talk about later on if it deserved that money or not. Number two, Encanto, $6.5 million. 81. Last week, guys, I was talking about this movie. Will they leave it in there long enough? It's been in there four weeks. Will it be there long enough to make a hundred million? And at this return, six million a clip, six million a clip. Bing. You know, last week was nine. This week, six million. Can it still churn that out? I totally forgot. And this is straight dumb, dumb on myself. Uh, happy accident, if you will. The movie's coming out on Disney Plus next weekend. It'll be in Disney Plus, and I'll have a review for you guys in episode two seventy two, if not seventy three, at the very latest, because it's on Disney Plus. It's not going to make the hundred million. Because at this point now it's on Disney Plus. Why is anybody now going to go to the theater? Once again, the competition next weekend in the theaters is 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 phenomenal. So it's eighty one's its lane. I don't see it making the hundred million, but but darn good for Encanto to make that much, especially uh, in this realm and what have you. Anyway, all right. So West Side Story only three million dollars again financially. This movie's been a flop. I've actually seen some bad word of mouth, and and we can talk about this later. You know, I absolutely adored the movie, loved the movie, but I'm seeing a large segment of people that are like, time out, movie was amazing, yes, song and dance, yes, performances were great, but let's not glaze over the rapiness (laughs) of the movie. And and folks that say that are absolutely right, and I, I, for my review last week where I was very excited about the film and very happy about it, folks that push back on this movie because of the changes at the end where, or or the non-changes, where they didn't change some of the folks to be a little less grungy, we'll go for as a word, uh, they're absolutely right. And I fully agree with that. There are some changes that were made to the movie that I wish, you know what, if they were going to make some changes, they could have changed things. You know, you had the Jets were just some rough and tumble guys, gang, street thugs, but they're down on the luck type guys, and you turn them into monsters, right, at the end there. I, I, I'm diverting here. So I can see, I can see now why this movie also is not making some serious money. And, and that is a valid reason to it. Still a phenomenal movie, still absolutely loved the song and dance production of it, but I can see why people were very upset at the actual plot line storytelling. Fourth place, Ghostbusters Afterlife, $3.4 million, $117 million total. Nightmare Alley, the other big release of the week. I did not get to see it. Super busy weekend, uh, but $2.9 million. I mean, it wasn't going to battle Spider-Man. I think they were hoping that you just had the other section of folks who were going to be like, oh, I'm not into the superhero things. Let me go see this Nightmare Alley film. Those people were not alive. Uh, again, though, half the theaters, 2,100 theaters, they only put it into. So, so be it. Uh, just under $3 million. And House of Gucci comes in with another 
Uh, this one I'm not sh uh, familiar with, but Pushpa, The Rise, Part 1, mind you. Only 400 theaters, limited release there, $1.3 million for its opening weekend. Eternals sit in 8th place, $1.1 as well. Uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog at ninth with 400000 and then Resident Evil comes in 10th. Out of the top 10 again is Dune, Venom, French Dispatch. Those are all dropped out of the top 10 over the past couple of weeks. But, you know, Spider-Man is your big movie there. Gigantic. Um, if you would like to know the domestic numbers for all of 2021, right? I mentioned Spider-Man is now number one total gross. And, I, and we'll move on from the box office because uh, I've been belaboring the heck out of this money. Spider-Man number one, $253 million it's made in 2021 so far. Also call it four days. That's insane. Shang-Chi, I mentioned that $224 million. Shang-Chi, it sounded like I said tree. Uh, Venom, two twelve dollars overall. Black Widow, one eighty three dollars overall. F9, one seventy three. I'm so glad that Black Widow beat out, is beating F9. Well deserved. Eternals, one sixty three. No Time to Die, one sixty. Quiet Place, two one sixty. And Free Guy, one twenty one. Ghostbusters, one seventeen. So Ghostbusters will probably four million more dollars past Free Guy and solidify the ninth place slot, but it won't take over Quiet Place. Um, just insane numbers. If we're talking about our top tens for the year so far, now granted we have one more weekend to go. Sony has one, two. Three films in your top ten with with uh, what's it called Ghostbusters and then Venom and Spidey. Disney, of course, has Shang Chi, Black Widow, Eternals in there as well, and then you know Twentieth Century MGM uh, with No Time to Die. Twentieth Century, of course, has their one guy with the free guy, of course, and then Paramount is just sitting there with a quiet place, like woo, fun to be here. Anywho, I mean Sony and Disney, Disney and Sony, there you know, and you wonder what money goes to who, what money goes to what with the with the Spider Man Venom combo there so you want to check off disney again for having five of the ten have at it man have at it okay done with the box office uh this means we have giveaway time sorry this is a long box office thing the winner bing 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 winner of a amc gift card some take two podcast merchandise and this spider-man funko pop the closest bid without going over Without going over, Bob Barker rules. That's how we roll. Uh, Price is right rules. I say Bob Barker out of out of respect because I miss the Bob. You know, I know Drew Carey's probably been doing that thing for, what, 10 years now? How, how fast time flies. Pancake for table. Shy Corman is our big winner. He had the closest bid without going over, and he is the winner of our Spider-Man No Way Home giveaway. Congrats to Shy. This is coming to you. Uh, you live close enough where I might be able to save some postage. And uh, not have to mail it. But that means we have to get together and maybe have share a beverage. So I don't mind that. First round's on me. Congrats to you, Sir Shy. Folks, we'll be doing more giveaways as we go along. And I hope more and more of you guys jump in there. We uh, we actually had a couple of late entries into the, uh, the Spider-Man giveaway. Which, uh, it was a bummer that they were late because they would have been competitive for sure. But Shy, you are the winner. Congratulations to Shy. Anybody, if you know the guy... Uh, please hit him up and say, congrats, woohoo, I hate you because you won and I didn't. I don't know, something fun like that. All right, we move on from the box office and we move right into our poll result. The poll this week, I said, this is simple, Spidey's on everybody's brain. Who's your favorite Spider-Man? Tobey Maguire, Tom Holland, Andrew Garfield, or Shameik Moore? Uh, you know, the heavy rumor going into this Spider-Man movie is that Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield may appear into spider-man when we have our review segment in a little bit we will chat about if or if not they actually did appear 253 million dollars in the box office i think most of you listening know that answer so i just want to know plain and simple who's your favorite spidey who is it you know toby the og andrew with the amazing tom your current and then some more should make more of course voices miles morales in into the spider-verse which many folks out there have as their favorite spider-man movie of all time so i thought he might get some love uh, we got nothing out of Instagram and nothing out of Facebook on this one. It was straight up Twitter, some comments on Twitter, and then straight up just the voting. The voting, 42%. Toby Maguire, 42% for Toby. I'm a little shocked by that. I really was. I truly was. Coming in at second place, and I will tell you, I was following this all weekend. He was in last for a while, last for a minute, and then chilling in third. But in the last minute, he got a solid boost. Tom Holland comes in at 28% of the voting. Andrew Garfield comes in at 26%. And then Shameik Moore rounds it out with the 4%. That makes sense to me. I had a feeling that it would be that. I, I mean, even if the next two Spider-Verse films are phenomenal, if they're on par with the first one, 
just animated versus live action, more people are just going to adhere to the live action. They're just going to enjoy that better uh, and someone you can hold on to better. Because if we sat here and debated live action versus animated, you know, you're throwing in Kevin Conroy's, you're throwing it, you know, with the Batman animated, you're throwing in a lot of names in here. That's like, wait, now we're getting so conflicted. So I don't blame that, but I did want you to make more in there because it is picture. It is a phenomenal performance. As far as some comments go, uh, Takaran Gollum, uh, Tack was his uh, is his Twitter name said I got to go with Tobey Maguire. He's the one I fell in love with in the beginning, and I simply don't see someone beating that out. Now Tack did comment that on Thursday, so I'm guessing Tack had yet to see No Way Home. Could his mind have changed? Tack, if you're listening, hit, hit me up on the side there. Uh, did your mind change? Let me know on Twitter. Slide to the DM, or you can 667-365-8253. Text or leave a voicemail. And then uh, every Steve from everything I learned from movies uh, went with the gif of the uh, noir Spider-Man out of the uh, Into the Spider-Verse. Very good choice. So you got one vote for there. So Toby is your winner. It's hard to beat the OG. You ask this question, you know, who's your favorite Superman? People are like, I can't get over Reeves. That was my childhood. Um... If you ask people of Batman, I can't get over Keaton. That was my childhood, you know, and as great as these other performances have been. And you also sometimes wonder if the other performances cancel out their voting. Like, oh, I really liked what Garfield did here, but his movie sucked. But I really love what Holland has done, and let me see what else they have. So those votes will cancel. You know, I got my trilogy with Toby. I'll stick with Toby. So I wonder if votes, eh, meh, yeah, yeah. Uh, have any type of action there all right from the poll result we're going to go right into our reviews thank you guys for listening and joining along i will give you a heavy uh spoilers coming uh alerts in a wee bit but for now this is going to be your spoiler free section of spider-man no way home we've been uh anticipating this film for quite some time um i i'll be honest i did not love spider-man uh, far from home. Uh, it was good. Uh, it advanced the storyline, gave us a little bit extra. Obviously, it ended well, setting up the next one. Very much enjoyed. Uh, you know, uh, Homecoming to me is a superior film to Far from Home. So this one, I was, I was pumped. The trailers got me pumped again. I'm also going to assume, folks, that you have seen the trailers at this point. If you have not also seen the trailers, maybe you should just fast forward completely. Because I'm going to talk freely in this section about people we see in said trailers, if that's okay. I know some folks out there are like, I'm out, I'm not even going to watch the trailers. And maybe you haven't, and you also have not seen the film. So if that's the case, let me give you a little bit of a second here to just fast forward, time stamp it up to succession. That's our next review. John Watts is back to direct this one. He's done all three of them. You know, um, Chris McKenna, Eric Summers, they're writing this one again. They know this character so well. Uh, two hours and 38 minute runtime. I'm just going to say straight up, guys, they absolutely knocked this out of the park. It is phenomenal. Absolutely a phenomenal film. Uh, I want to shy away from using the word amazing just because amazing and Spider-Man have a connotation there. Um, It's a little messy to begin with. First act, it's we're finding our footing. What are we doing? Second act, even we're finding our footing. All right, I see why you're adding this in. I see why you're adding these scenes between Ned and MJ and Peter. And you're building something going forward. But I definitely, if we rewatch this again, could pick out like about six scenes. It's like, all right, I understand the depth and the girth you want to add to the film because of these scenes. But I don't think the film would suffer if you remove the four of these seven scenes just to pull them out. Because it's not distracting in the plot line at all. But it is kind of like I didn't. All right, those were neato. Those were fun. Granted, there's scenes in there with uh, Happy uh, sleeping with the, you know, the uh, was the sleep apnea mask, and he can hear Peter and MJ on the phone FaceTiming each other. Not needed, but also hilarious. Great scene. Lots of fun. Uh, Ned and MJ and Peter just living their daily lives and trying to get into colleges and what have you. Not needed, but also move the storyline along. So there's a little bit of messiness in, in the beginning. Storyline, of course, folks, you know that these, you know, the, he asked Doctor Strange to help things out, and then because they goof up the spell, all these villains come from different universes and different Spider-Man films that we had seen in said past. Um, the messing up of the spell, I didn't, it wasn't as strong as I thought it would be. Like, the the whole Peter goose the whole thing up. He's just kind of talking. Like, I wanted to, I wanted Doctor Strange to be like, buddy, I, I don't know. It was, a, it was a convenient, there are a couple of points in here where it was pretty convenient how they just got away with that. I just felt that the messing up of the spell scene was going to be a little stronger. Like, like Peter really intervened, like, you know, hands on, like, hang on, time out, don't. Don't mess this up type thing. 
the uh so then as the story progresses we get you know we get more depth into what is actually happening peter now is out to try and help people but he needs to make the decision do i help these people because it doesn't benefit me if anything it's a detriment to me uh, but what is the greater good here and how much power do i actually have versus how much responsibility do i actually have power responsibility whoops i said those words in the same sentence um then the end, when we do get to the end, folks, it's phenomenal. Any messiness that Acts 1 and 2 might carry over are completely swept under the rug with Act 3. It ends so fantastically. I'm not kidding. Actual tears, like, formulating in my eyeballs. Not strong ones, but just, like, emotional, you know? Uh, there was some heft to some scenes at the end of Act 2, going into 3, or the beginnings of 3, and then, boom, finishing things up. Fantastic. Fantastically done. And the storyline that they give you guys towards the end, whether we find out what surprises are in store or not, are are great. You know, and 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 if I can say this surprise wise, the surprises you guys are thinking about that might or might not be there, you know, with the other Spider Men and, and other villains or whatever, there's more. There's other surprises, other characters that we talk about, uh, at the very least, in this movie. I highly recommend going to see this film. There's a push out there for Tom Holland to get nommed. I'm not against it. I'm not against it. And, uh, you know, there, there are, you know, Twitter trolls out there trying to name other names like, oh, I'd rather see this, these five people instead. And I disagree. I feel Tom Holland has put a solid top five performance of a male of a best actor so far this year out there in this in this film. The emotionality and the range that he exemplifies in this movie is up there with any other acting performance that we have seen. There are some other movies still yet to come out. I'm very intrigued. But if he gets an acting nomination, he won't. He won't, but if he does, I'm all for it. Totally fine. Totally fine. I can, I, you know, tops of my head right now. I'm thinking of maybe two that I like, that I like, like better than his, you know, Garfield's and tick, tick, boom. I probably would put above his, there's some other good ones out there performance wise, but I, I can't sit here and say pound the desk. These five are better than Tom Holland in this movie. I would 100% be behind that. And when we do our, you know, Oscar uh, nominations morning, you know, a live stream that we normally do here, uh, and his name is announced, you will see me hoot and holler and cheer. That'll be fantastic. I would absolutely love it. Granted, we do have a couple of more movies to come out, which are supposedly giving us strong acting performances. But nonetheless, I I guarantee you Tom Holland has just given you a top 10 acting, male acting, best actor performance. <laughs> That's a sentence. Best acting uh, performance by male of the year. Easily. Easily can say top 10. And I'd be fine if you wanted to say top five. And he got an Oscar nomination out of this. Not to be ignored is Zendaya and her performance. Will she get nominated? No, 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 no. But let's not ignore the range that this young lady gives you. I, I like to say Tom Holland is your next king of Hollywood, right? And he's battling uh, Chalamet. They're going back and forth. I say his name wrong on purpose. Um and after this, Holland's back. Holland's back winning. He's winning. He's the next king of Hollywood. Let's see what other movies he can do. You know, that Fred Astaire film, and he's got the, the action-adventure thing. Let's see what else this dude can do, right? Because um, he's projecting that way. And then he could get a nomination out of a superhero film if, if he does that. <laughs> Hello. Zendaya. So for Queen of Hollywood, I'm on Viola Davis or Regina Queen. <laughs> Regina King as Queen of Hollywood, right? These are my queens of Hollywood right now. Viola or Regina. Obviously Meryl Streep, of course. Um, Zendaya's pathing as well, right? Pathing as well. These two, if they stay together, talk about the royal couple of Hollywood. Easily, easily. Her talent is up there, up there with anybody else in Hollywood right now. And she's only 23 years old, 26 years old at best, right? I don't know her age. I don't have it in front of me. So please do not ignore the fact that Zendaya gives you a phenomenal performance. I would like to talk more about other acting performances in a minute, but I think that should be in the spoiler section. I will wrap my spoiler-free part of uh, Spider-Man. I was asked ahead of time, do I need to see Eternals or Shang-Chi to see this movie? You do not. You can go into this fresh. I would vote you see Spider-Man, the other Holland Spider-Mans. That might help you out a little bit, especially Far From Home. Definitely see those, and I'm pretty sure everyone has. That's probably the list, listening to this review. All right, let's move things along quickly, guys. I give it a nine out of ten. I, I ten out. Of, well, we do things out of five. Uh, four point seven five out of five. You know, uh, it, it's it's it, it's a five out of five. What what am I talking about here? I, I give it a five out of five. The acting performances, everything, 
you know, I'm not even going to nitpick the nitpicks. That's boring to me. I'm not even going to do it. This movie drove emotion out of me. I'm giving it the five. There it is. Bing, bing, bing. I should have a bell. Ding, ding. We got a five out of fiver. So that gives me, what, Coda, uh, maybe Tick, Tick, Boom, uh, Belfast, and Spider-Man No Way Home uh, as my five out of five so far this year. I'm sure there's some other ones. That's just straight top of my head. All right. Spoiler alert. Spoilers, guys. Spoilers are coming. If you have not seen this movie yet, please fast forward in your timestamps. Check down below. Succession is the next film. Check for when we are done talking spoilers. I'm trying to say the word spoiler a whole bunch to give you folks enough time to spoiler yourselves in a fast forwarding fashion ahead. Here we go with the... I'm even going to take a swig of my coffee while we're at it. As I say this, I realize maybe this won't be um, as in-depth as it needs to be because it's just me geeking out. And I will be honest, going forward, guys, I am about to Marvel fanboy geek out big time. Um, folks who may not know, I am not a Marvel nor a DC. I am at all. I am a give-it-to-me-all, baby. Uh, in both. I had, Growing up, I read more DC, but I read plenty. And and in, my, in the Marvel readings, it was X-Men and Spidey, number two. So uh, I was very happy for these films that these are happening. Uh, happy. Hmm. Oh, John Favreau. Uh, P.S. John Favreau put on a couple LBs for this pound, for this movie. I was explaining to my daughter, because um, she was like, he's from Rudy, right? He's, you know, the guy from Rudy. And, uh, and we're like, yeah. And I said, it's funny because he was, you know, thicker. He was a little stockier than Rudy, but then he was on Friends and he was like Bill. You know, he was never cut, but he was like a Bill Duke because he did that whole UFC fighting thing that he wanted to do. Um, just the evolution of the John Favreau. Love John Favreau and everything that he's brought to not only this world, but uh, the, the MCU, but also Star Wars. I already mentioned Tom Holland acting performance. I already mentioned Zendaya acting performance. God bless us that we were just given Jamie Foxx and Willem Dafoe to, to just drop Oscar level acting into our laps. Alfred Molina is fantastic. But then it's like, oh, P.S., Jamie Foxx, Oscar winner, is going to bring more depth to a character that everybody did not like and say, here's what I'm going to do to Electro. I'm going to make you like Electro more as a character in this film than in his own entire film, you know, that where he was the, the, the main conflict. This one where he's, you know, a side piece. It's like, oh, that's right. Jamie Foxx is a fantastic actor and he doesn't hold back. He's fantastic. Um Willem Dafoe, my God, man. I love the choice, and there's rumors of who made the choice to not wear the mask anymore, the goblin mask, and it's so that we could see Dafoe's face. And was it Dafoe's, Feige's, whose who's choice was it? Whomever it was, good on you. It's fantastic. Like, if they were just like, you know what? F it, folks. Supporting actor, Will Dafoe. <laughs> like, I would, I'd be mad because there's other performances out there, but I wouldn't be mad at all because the guy is me. He owns it. He now puts his Norman Osborn into the upper echelon of all-time superhero villains, right? Put him up there. Hackman's Lex Luthor, Nicholson's Joker, Ledger's Joker. Uh, if you want to do, um, what's his name? I can't think of his right. Killmonger. You know, I, lot, I know a lot of people love that, but he only had the one film. But here you go, Defoe, his Norman Osborn, his Goblin is up there. Top five all time. Just like rank them all. I'm sorry. How can I glaze over Thanos? It's there. It's there now because he is just absolutely fantastic. Um, all right. Marissa Tomei. <gasps> Pour one out. My goodness. The symbolisms throughout that scene with with Aunt May um, was insane. You know, I'm not sure folks noticed, but not only does she give the great power, great responsibility line, but also the way that he laid her down was identical to the way that Tony Stark laid Holland down. And some of you are like, duh. But if you guys didn't, you know, pick up on that, like the little things that Marvel does is what makes them so great and so superior to some of the other film studios. Oh, here's my other point that I wanted to say. To the filmmakers out there who say that superheroes films are not cinema, you're wrong. That's all. End sentence. Send tweet. That's it. You're, you're just straight wrong. I'm sorry because... After watching this film, this is solid quality cinema because it drives emotions out of you stronger. I had more emotional feeling than than seeing half the movies that I've watched this year after watching these characters live and die literally uh, on the screen. 
uh, the connection between Zendaya, Holland, and Batalon, you know, who, uh, Jacob Batalon, who plays Ned, fantastic, absolutely great. I was very happy we did not get a ton of Doctor Strange. You know, I'm not into the magical stuff. That's Roy from the Realms. That's the whole reason Take Two Podcast has an extra thing is because Roy is so good at that, at the realm of Take Two, and he has a spinoff show, which you're going to get next week. I have a feeling that Roy might even jib jab about Spider Man uh, next week on, on the Realms December issue. Uh, but. We didn't get a ton of it in there. We got, I think, just the right amount. You know, he was in it in the beginning, introduced a conflict, had to fight Spider-Man. It was awesome. It was fun seeing the two of them fight each other, if you will. And then he winds up returning at the right at the right time. Conveniently, right? Conveniently. There's also conveniently that in Happy's uh, apartment is the exact machine that could then cure, <laughs> cure these guys. All right. I'm not even talking about the best part. The best cameo of the entire film, what everybody was really was hoping was happening, and the part that I might have cheered the loudest for was when freaking Charlie Cox and that Kane comes on the screen, and he sits down, and I was like, yes, yes, and I felt bad because I'm with my daughter, her friend, and her friend's father. And, you know, he and I weren't close enough to, to nudge each other throughout the thing. But my daughter's – now, my daughter has not watched Daredevil yet. Obviously, it's a little out of her age bracket. She's only 13. Um, so she was kind of like, uh, you good, man? And I was just like, forget And she was like, we know this guy? And I was like, that's Daredevil. That's the, that was the best I could explain, you know, in the movie or whatever. But just like, you know, this the past week with Hawkeye, I'm not going to get into Hawkeye spoilers for those who haven't seen it, but, like, giving us tidbits into that world. And then you have people on social media with um, D'Onofrio giving you little tidbits going forward into his social media. It was like, come on, baby, come on. And they delivered, and they delivered. And when um, he catches the brick coming out, I was like, yes, yes, almost dropping F-bombs in front of my daughter. Um, either way. So then we get, you know, Garfield and, and Toby, and my God. There's just, there's things I didn't think I needed to see in a film. There are honestly things I did not think I needed to see in my lifetime, i.e. one man cracking another man's back. But, but goodness, was it beautiful, right? When one Spider-Man cracking another Spider-Man's back, I just thought it was absolutely gorgeous. I thought Toby did a phenomenal job as the older mentor Spider-Man. I thought Andrew did a phenomenal job as an experienced, but still the witty and, and campy Spider-Man, the amazing Spider-Man. He plays that role perfectly. Folks that have read both books, like I think, you guys would agree. They both played that perfect. Toby played the mentor role perfect. Um, I was reading in there how Toby like really did not want to be back in the suit. He was very Tom Welling about it. Like, don't put me back in the suit. But then eventually, right, it gives us that little bit of a taste. That's why he came in dressed as a youth pastor the whole time. <laughs> God, the, the, the one-liners are great. Um, right, as soon as we got home, my, my daughter went and grabbed a piece of bread and threw it at me. It's just like, I thought you had the tingle. I was like, I do have the tingle, but not for bread. <laughs> this is so good. Oh, there are so many great parts about that. All right, so the emotionality of it, Aunt May, we've already checked that off. The ending, we've already, I've discussed, but it's just strong, man. And this is the evolution of this character. This is why I put Tom Holland up there for best for best actor because he gives you the entire gauntlet of going through all of these issues in his life, all of this loss and all the sacrifice happens to this character, and then in the end, he decides, I got to sacrifice it all, man. I have to sacrifice it all. Um, and he, and he makes that decision. So going forward in the MCU, what do we do with Tom Holland? Is he back? I will say, if that little post credit scene with Venom was not in place, I would think that we are done with Tom Holland, that we are 100% done. Now, I know we've had the heavy, heavy rumors yet to be confirmed that he is back for three more, that they want to do another trilogy. Um, you know, we've also had Garfield say, hey, if Sony's down, I'll do, th I'll do more movies. I'll come back myself. Why not? Um, so... I'm curious as to see what they do. He's got to be back. He's 25 years old. Knock these three films out. Knock out another trilogy. Figure out what you can put him into with Doctor Strange. There's rumors that we're going to see the guy in Hawkeye because of how this movie ended with him swinging over the Rockefeller Christmas tree from the state of Maryland, by the way. You're welcome. Uh, and that's like, you know, and Hawkeye is all around the Rockefeller Christmas tree. So I, I desperately want to see Hawkeye this week. Like, oh, please don't even tease me that Spider-Man swings by. I'm sure you guys saw the Easter eggs with the Rogers, the musical as he's swinging through New York, that kind of fun stuff. Guys, I loved this movie. I can't wait to see it again and pick apart some of the Easter eggs and what have you. This is upper echelon to me, uh, Spider-Man. Uh, I mean, it might be number one. I'm trying to not recency bias it. Again, like I said a second ago, I have not. I never left any of the other films as much as I adored them thinking let me see this again right away this movie i want to see again right away for a multitude of reasons and i just thought this movie was that good i truly enjoyed it 
can we pick nitpick little things here and there? Of course. Of course. 100%. There are little tiny things. It did not need to be 2 hours and 38 minutes, 28 minutes long. You easily could have had this thing be 2 hours and, and 10 minutes long. Trim off 18 minutes of, of jib-jab. And it would have made it better. But it's okay. Because I think one thing that Marvel decided to do is they were just like, just let some scenes go. You know, I thought a beautiful scene was him swinging through the power lines. And we just watched him swing. And swing. And swing. And it was just like a slow draw. Like, do we need to see that? We could have seen him just like look at some power lines and shoot the web and do a one-time swing. But no, they just kind of showed him. And it just showed Spider-Man is alone. He's alone in his life and alone in the, some of these challenges as much as these people want to help, you know. And I thought that those types of things were beautiful. So, yes, could you have taken some things out? Sure. Could it have made it better? I don't know. Maybe. Probably. But. Bottom line is, guys, five out of five for me. Absolutely adore this film. Where are they going with this guy in the MCU? I'm not totally sure. The last thing I'll say, and I tweeted this out for those who follow on Twitter. Um, anyone who watches the Graham Norton show, I'm a big Graham Norton fan. Love his, his show. Tom Hanks and Tom Holland years ago were on the show together. And Hanks and Holland do like a oh, – um, uh, practicing the repetitions in acting, just an acting class. And I mean, just crazy. Tom Hanks like holds an acting class with Tom Holland. And he makes him say coffee. He was like, would you like some coffee? And then Tom Holland has to say, coffee, coffee. I'd like some coffee, right? If you haven't seen the clip. I, I tweeted it out so you can go find it uh, easily. I'll do it again because it's a funny clip. So I tease, you know, my daughter is madly in love with Tom Holland, the celebrity crush. And so we, I, we, it's a running gag in our in our house. If we ever grab a coffee, I go, coffee, coffee. Tom Hanks, I want coffee. Like making fun of Tom Holland's squeaky voice. And it, and it bothers my daughter or whatever. So we always do that. Coffee, coffee, just like Tom Holland. So at the end of the film, when he goes into the coffee shop and he orders a coffee, like Tom Holland does, <laughs> there's two people in the entire theater laughing, me and my daughter. And then her friend was like, "Did I? what did I miss? Why is ordering a coffee funny? Is this supposed to be funny? Is that spider coffee? What do we do with the coffee? I don't know about the coffee. And we're like, no, 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 total inside joke. But now I've shared said inside joke with you folks. That could have been the sport story time for today, but we have a different story time later. Spider-Man, No Way Home, go see it immediately. I'm not going to jib-jab any further, guys. I absolutely adored it. I do ask anyone... 667-365-8253. Uh, hit me up on the side. If you guys have my number personally, I would love to chat this movie even more so. There is so much in there. You know, so much in there. I, I, guys, I was an Avenger. That's great. What's an Avenger? Is it like a, in a band? You were in a band? Like, there's so many lines that this movie just dropped on you. So many quotable lines. I was like, yes, you know? So much better than some one random dude catching another dude's hammer. Am I right? Spider-Man No Way Home. Five out of five. Absolutely adored it. Very, very intrigued to see where they go forward in this. I will be seeing this movie again. Uh, I feel bad because going forward is loaded. And all I want to do is go back and see Spidey again. Wrapping that up. Moving along to Succession. Okay, all of you guys who uh, fast forwarded along with the um, Spider-Man spoiler section. Welcome to Succession. Uh, hopefully you didn't fast forward through this and you are caught up through Succession Season 3. It just ended last weekend, so I'm eh, a week late. Uh, not really because I record Mondays and by the time something drops Sunday night, I never watch uh, things in live time. Uh, who does, right? Uh, I wouldn't have got around to it this, to this week anyway. So I'm kind of on time here with Succession Season, season 3. Here's the kicker. I binged watch seasons one and two in the past two weeks. That should tell you whether I like the show or not. I do. It is that good. Season one of Succession, solid. Good stuff. Very intriguing. You spend a lot of time, I felt, in like a, wait, all of these people are shitbags? Like, I don't like anybody here. They're all bad. Everyone's bad. Everyone's a dirty player in this. So why do I watch type thing? But then you're like, well, I, I want to see what happens. Let me keep watching because I want to see who's a jerkier jerk to the other jerk than they are type thing. You know, like I just got to keep watching this thing. So that's that's where it sucks you in. Season two, though, goes next level. And I can see where some people rank season two of Succession as one of their top seasons of television all time. I can see why people say that. I don't, but I would put it top 25-ish. It is fantastic. It is really good. Um, and then it even ends better than you would expect. It ends better than uh, the entire season leads up to. We are just like, holy crap. I can't believe they decided to go that route. That's awesome. Let me push play on season three. I can't imagine you folks who had to wait after that season two cliffhanger then until season three dropped. 
season three, good. Better than season one. Probably not better than season two. Very much so enjoyed it. That cliffhanger that they gave us. I'm not going to spoil anything here, folks. Uh, going forward is awesome. Like, now it's a legit what's going to happen. The one thing I have with this show is there's a lot of business things in here that I'm like, all right, I'm not a business dude. I've never worn a suit and tie to work. So it's cool, but when they start talking monies versus that monies and we'll acquire this and these acquisitions onto that, all right, cool. Don't lose me, please, with the please with the with the lawyer talk if you don't mind. And and they, they walk the line. They walk the line there. But also when they talk money, they're just like, Yeah, that's two bill. Yeah, that that will probably be about three bill. Ah, we'll buy them out. What do you think? Five point two billion, five point five billion. It's like, wait a second, what dollars are what are we talking about here, Harry? What kind of money are we talking? The things I want to talk about with succession are the acting performances. Brian Cox. Now, granted, this thing's won nine Emmys, right? At least tons of Emmys, bunch of gold clubs. Brian Cox is phenomenal he does a great job i've loved the evolution of his character because early on like season one he had the health issues so you didn't get a lot from him season two now the health issues are gone ish and you're getting more where you see both sides of him where he plays that businessman he plays the asshole dad but then he plays like that smarmy dude that's like when he sees you it's like hey how are you good to see you like real happy go lucky type guy that is all a front and, and like i'm loving that and you got even more of that from brian cox in season three where when he's like welcoming and happy and smiling, you're like, well, it's happening. Why are you smiling, sir? That's kind of interesting. So I think he does a fantastic job. Season three of Kieran Culkin is top level. Uh, the episode where he accidentally sends a uh, picture of his uh, pants off, if you will, sends one of those pics, not to whom he wanted to send it to. I was laugh out loud laughing. Very, I thought that was one of the better scenes in the entire series. I was like, that's funny stuff. That's good stuff. Why would they even do that? There's no reason to go that route, but they did, and it was humorous. Uh, but his his one-liners have gone, like, they. I felt like season one, they tried to, like, throw a couple in there just to show you that he's kind of like an off-the-cuff dude. Season two, they're like, hey, let's see if we can get away with this character. Let's throw in some more things. And then season three, he's just, chains are off, no holds barred, let's rock and roll, says what he wants to say, and it's hilarious. Love, 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 love. Jeremy Strong, I fully expect another nomination for this gentleman this year. He does a fantastic job. The He now gives you a full character arc, like a full character of ups and downs and highs and lows and where's he going to go going forward. And he's fantastic. He even gives himself a nice little haircut. Well done. Sarah Snook, again, she's fantastic. God, I hate her. I hate her. I think she's such a jerk. Um, oh, crazy. I mean, I've hated her since season one, ever since on her wedding night, she tells Tom, like, hey, I would like to have an open relationship. You know, I think it would help our relationship if it was open. That conversation was actually had to me one time as well. Uh, but that's a little behind the curtain. At, at, on the wedding night, though, on their wedding night, uh, tells that to Tom. That brings me to Tom. Matthew McFadden. I love Tom. Love Tom. I think he's fantastic. The way he laughs at Greg, and he can just, like, be, like, regular, angry, angry, and then he just does that over room filling huge smile you know booming laugh oh matt i i wish matt mcfadden was on social media he's really not because i would be sending him all sorts of uh, love notes of his performances nonstop. all right succession season three i i don't want to give too much stuff away but you know the, they're talking about the business being sold being bought out can we buy this other place this other place actually wants to buy us this time that type of a thing i thought it really took a step in the evolution of a lot of characters like some characters that were side characters are not people i'm more interested in than the main and that's a big deal. And that's a big deal going forward for season four. Looking forward to it. only nine eps, by the way, for season three. Good on you. I, I, I enjoy that. I like when a show is like, you know, we did 10, we did 10. Maybe we just need nine. We don't need 10 to tell this story. Don't give me a filler episode. And I, and I actually like, I appreciate that. Next season, if they're like, you know, we only need seven. As much as I wanted more, that's the story you need to tell. That's the time you need to tell it. Rock on. Now give me season four as soon as you can. Six Sessions Season 3, I highly recommend. It's really good, guys. I, I bought in. I can't believe I didn't push play until now. I'm glad I finally did, and I'm looking forward to Season 4 immediately. All right, on to Swan Song. Just dropped onto Apple Plus TV. This is a story about Mahershala Ali. Uh, he plays a pair of brothers here, and this is in the future, and he is terminally ill. But he has a way to get out of this, and I don't want to give too much away again uh, because I feel you guys should see this he has a way to get out of this using futuristic technology that his wife and children don't know that he dies again he plays brothers 
two characters in this one. Uh, Ali, Naomi Harris, Aquafina, Glenn Close, they show up. Glenn Close actually has a, a great role in this. Naomi Harris, I love. I feel she's very underrated. People are just like, oh, yeah, that girl. More people need to know her name. It's slow. The movie's not fantastic. It, it's intriguing. It's an interesting thought uh, provoking type script where it's, you know, if the technology's there, should I use it? Should I do this? Should I fib to my closest loved ones? But it will save them the pain and agony of something else. Like, do I lie to them blatantly and deceive them to save them a ton of pain? That kind of questioning in your life. Uh, the and and it's good. It's good. the The movie itself is good. It's it's a it's a slow mover. A little bit a little higher up from a slow burn. It does have some fun like futuristic tech. It's interesting though. Like they have the self driving space cars. You know, the futuristic cars. But then they still have the handles on the doors. You know, I was like, wait a second, why do they still have handles on doors? Again, we nitpick. Um, the key here is Mahershala Ali. Ali is fantastic. I would not be surprised to see his name in award season time because he's great. He owns this. This is you know his second leading big time leading role, and he does a great job here. Uh, we've all been in love with this dude for a while now, especially since Moonlight and and beyond. And I think he's. I mean, he's already won Oscars, but now he's supplanting himself as like a go-to leading guy as he should be. He also wears the hell out of a beanie. I remember when he got he gave his his Oscar acceptance speech wearing a beanie. I was like, whoa, all right, rocking a beanie indoors. Eh, I have issues with that. Men shouldn't wear hats indoors, but still, um, he wears it so well. He does a very good job. I'm jealous of the way he's able to wear a knit hat. Congrats on him. Um, as a white guy, I, I can't pull that off. I can't pull off a beanie, you know, or a knit hat. Most white guys, they wear the, the knit hat with the pom-pom. That's the best I can do. I just, that's all we go. Anywho, Apple Plus TV right now. The movie's fine. Mahershala Ali is fantastic. I highly recommend seeing this. You might need to see this, uh, hint, hint, for award season time. Maybe there are some performances that might feed him out, i.e. Tom Holland. <laughs> but uh, definitely check this out. I enjoyed Swan Song. I enjoy it a lot. I, I don't want to give too much away because it's very thought provoking. You know, inner. You have to look inside oneself and make decisions that would affect everybody else. Kind of like Spider Man. Not really. Totally different thought process. But Swan Song, Apple Plus TV. Check that out immediately when you're done. No need to change that channel, folks. Switch on over to The Shrink Next Door. Eight episodes of The Shrink Next Door. Um, these are shorter eps, you know, only a total of about five and a half hours of run time. All of them added up together. This is Will Ferrell, Paul Rudd, Catherine Hahn. God, I love her. Absolutely adore Catherine Hahn. Um, Casey Wilson, don't want to uh, glaze over her because her, her character kind of grows towards the end. She plays the wife of Paul Rudd. This is based on a true story. Uh, Marty Markowitz owns this fabric company and he is very kind of rake loose guy, very scared of the world, you know, just a shy guy, non-confrontational introvert type dude meets a therapist, finally gets talked into meeting a therapist play, you know, Dr. Ike played by Paul Rudd. And he now talks him through like being a man, stepping up, you know, uh, or having a pair, whatever you want to call it. Um, and he does. And, you know, Will Ferrell's character, little by little, he's like stands up for himself and, and, and nothing mean, nothing malicious in, in any capacity. He just, you know, this woman, he's trying to break up with her, doesn't like her and, and just doesn't have the heart to tell her type thing and promised her like a trip to Spain when they were dating. Now they're broken up. Well, she's still trying to get the trip to Spain with or without him and like saying, you promised me. So therefore you gotta at least pay for the money. And so now Paul Rudd helps his character like grow to someone who can then say, no, ma'am, I I'm good to go. Thanks. Have a great life type thing. So then Dr. Ike, we find out is kind of like manipulating Marty, Will Ferrell's character into, oh, he's got tons of money. So maybe I can use him to pay for this and use him to pay for this. And so he starts mooching some money out of him. Wait a second. He's got this house in the Hamptons that is gorgeous. Nobody lives there. Now he's like, we should stay here more often. You should write your book and I'll just bring my family and we'll hang here. And so he starts duping him out of money, duping him out of his home type things. And, but he does it under the guise of their best friends, you know, and he even talks him out of, uh, straining his relationship with his sister played by Catherine Hahn. They're fantastic. It takes a minute to get used to Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell doing their Jewish New York accent. And it is very strong, very strong from both of them. Uh, even Catherine Hahn's, you know, very Jewish New York accent as well. Very strong. Um, but if you accept, you know, kind of get into that a little bit, like accept that both of them are giving that, this is one of my favorite Will Ferrell performances. One of my favorite Will Ferrell performances. 
straight next door. There, I've said it. Said what I said. Uh, I really enjoyed it. This is the Will Ferrell that I like. You know, this is the Will Ferrell that's not giving us the cheesy, over-the-top, campy comedy that is kind of like, all right, you're a great number two, but I don't like this comedy as a lead. This is great. And and don't get me wrong, folks. This isn't a straight comedy. This is more drama. It's funny. It has humor to it. It's good stuff. It's hard to put Paul Rudd, Catherine Hahn, and Will Ferrell in a room together and not just get funny scenes. But all of them own the drama that is involved here. Paul Rudd had to have had a blast playing this character. There are times where it's kind of like, is he SNL sketching here or is he playing this guy? And he quickly brings you back into, no, he's legit playing this role. This is this guy. This is, the you know, not just a character caricature of this guy, but this is this dude. And um, this guy was that over the top. I, guys, I really enjoyed this. Um, it's eight ups. It could have been six. Should have been six, uh, if you will, uh, because there's just a little bit extra as we drag a little bit extra. There is some serious drama towards the end. The way it wraps up, you're just like, holy crap, like, that's awesome. That's crazy. Oh, wow. Did not know we were going to go to that extreme. And again, all based on a on a true story, you know. So the tagline here is mind who you let inside type thing. I think Paul Rudd and Will Ferrell do a great job. It's it's no brainer. You can tell their chemistry is spot on. I wonder in filming, like their chemistry is probably so strong. They didn't need to do a bunch of multiple takes. But if either one of them decided to just go off course and be a goofball for a while, I'm sure they just riffed for hours because their chemistry is great. Either way, I really enjoyed it. Straight next door. Check it out. It's on Apple Plus immediately. That, folks, is going to wrap up our reviews for episode 271. I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, we are now going to move along to, oh, story time, story time. A little bit of story time. I'm checking the time slots here, man. We are at almost an hour, and we have a lot to go. This is going to be a lengthy episode. I do not apologize whatsoever. Let's take a little swig of rama. My daughter had AirPods uh, as like her number one gift that she wanted for Christmas. And then she also wanted Air Jordan 1s, mm-hmm. right? Air Jordan 1s, she specifically wanted the University Blue. She's obsessed with going to the University of North Carolina. She gets that from her dad. And she so those were 1s and 2s on her list that she wanted desperately. And you, know, you always ask the kids, okay, if Santa brought you one gift, one gift total, what would, and only, what would it be? So for a while it's the AirPods, but late, lately it has now bled over to the shoes. Now, those of you who are not sneakerheads, these shoes are, they just came out in June. Retro shoes, back to the back to the Jordan 1s, you know. And uh, they, 170 retail, but they went so quick that now you can maybe find them for like 300 would be at best price. 350-ish. I, I goofed. I goofed up. Normally, her mother and I communicate about what each other got for those who don't know her mother and I not together. Um, so we, we would communicate, you know, weeks in, in advance of Christmas, like, Hey, you know, did you get her these things? Okay, cool. I'll, I'll get these items and, and what have you didn't do that this year for some weird reason, because we just, um, it wasn't needed. Sure. Darn enough. I texted her mom the other day. Hey, by the way, you didn't happen to get those shoes. Cause I didn't realize that how badly she wanted to get the shoes. They were so high up on the list. And her mom says, no, I did get the AirPods, though. Guess what else I got? The AirPods. Dang it. Did not confirm this years ago. So both expensive items, both number one on the list. So I was like, all right, let me make some calls. So I make some calls and I start trying to talk to any sneakerheads I know out there. Now, granted, folks, I'm 40. Sneakering is not my thing anymore, okay? Back in the day, yeah. I had the very first pair of Griffies. I had multiple pair. I had three pair of Jordans. You know, I, I was a big sneaker guy. I liked uh, sneakers. I threw away the Griffies. Gave them to another kid on the baseball team when I found out that Griffey hated the Yankees. But uh, I'm like, crap, I, I, I need to make calls to sneaker people, to younger folks. I'm hitting up my younger cousins. Like, anybody have any sneaker connections, what have you. I go to the mall. Yeah, this is where I'm dumb. I go to Foot Locker, Okay. Walk around, I check in three other stores, I go into Foot Locker, I talk to the guy, I was like, buddy, I I, I know I'm looking for an impossible thing here, I'm, I'm playing a little dumber than I am to see if he can help, and and he's like, yeah, th- th- those shoes are insane, uh, there's a, a couple of websites that you could go to that are reputable that you should try, and he gives me two very solid reputable websites, granted, these shoes are now going to be $400, no less than, and he tells me that, I was like, I'm thinking five plus, and he's like, no, 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 you can get them three to four, Hundred bucks. I'm like son of a bitch. On my way out, there's a soul to soul spelled S O L to S O U L shoe store. I walk in. Every shoe you can think of is there, wrapped in plastic. 
So I say to the guy, hi. Oh, I'm sorry. I look down and there is the shoe. There is the shoe that I need. Now, Grant's a size like 15, right? Shaq would wear the shoe. Uh, for you younger kids, Shaquille O'Neal was a basketball player a long time ago. Um, so I asked the guy, I was like, hey, do you have this in my daughter's size? Bang. Or comparable men's size. And he was like, don't. But, sir, I can get that for you tomorrow. If you want the thing, I have this shoe here tomorrow. Can you be here tomorrow at 1 o'clock? So we're in the mall, yet I'm doing some under-the-table you know, the table dealings here. Fine by me. And I was like, I can do this. Yes, sir. I'll be here at 1 o'clock. What are you talking here? And he was like, 750. 750. 750. Another dude walks up and he's like, uh, the Air Ones University. And he was like, yeah, I can get uh, this size in here by tomorrow. And he was like, yeah, it's going to be around seven. Guy number one, 750. Guy number two, 750. Yeah, 750 would be about right. I was like, tomorrow, one o'clock. I'll be here. Thanks, boys. See ya. Walk out the door. I'll never see this gentleman again. In fact, it's almost one o'clock right now as we're talking. Sorry, they'll be sitting there twiddling their thumbs. I don't give a hoot. 750 darn dollars for a pair of shoes. Sorry, never went that route. Not going to happen from this guy. Um, but I didn't want to laugh in the gentleman's faces like, go F yourselves, because there are folks out there that are like, 750 Sold. I will take that. I'm going to save cash on that. And and I don't want to poo-poo people that, big-time sneakerheads, that they would pay that price because that is a collector's item for them. To end the story, I found a, the reputable website, had her size. Will they be here by Christmas? Probably not. Were they under $400? Yes, uh, with shipping expedited and all that, well under 400 bucks. So I didn't go nuts here. Crisis is overt. We can return the AirPods that we got to, so the money helped us even out. But story of the day, communicate, even if it's your ex-wife, folks. Communicate as best you can, so that way you're not double buying things and then in a rush to overspend for items for your children. The things we do for Christmas. All right, moving along from story time. I'd like to hear from you guys. What's the craziest item you've bought for your kids or a loved one in some capacity? 667-365-8253. I'd love to hear a Christmas buying story or some present out there. But it didn't have to be Christmas, birthday, whatever. Holiday, President's Day, Flag Day, whatever you guys bought a present for. That'd be fun. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, slide to the old DMs. We'd love to hear some buying stories. All right, on to casting couch, if you will. All right, guys, I'm going to try and motor a little bit here because we are running long. I don't want to get too long here because we do have some big topics still coming up. Zorro, Disney Plus series is doing a new live action Zorro and Wilmer Valderrama will be playing Zorro. Um, Wilmer, as you all know from Handy Manny, of course, also in that 70s show, I suppose. Those who know, they know. Handy Manny was the S for sure. A live action show coming to Disney Plus. Alone Today is a crime drama has added Danny Trejo, Shannon Elizabeth, and Frank Whaley. That is a movie coming out next year. A little crime drama. Nice. Treason. Netflix spy series written by Matt Charman. Matt Charman wrote Bridge of Spies, so this is his realm. Una Chaplin, uh, Olga Kirilenko, and Charlie Cox. Oh, we mentioned Charlie Cox earlier. Oh, wait, did we mention Charlie Cox earlier? I don't know. Do we? I don't know. Uh, Lyle Lyle Crocodile. We talked about this earlier that they're doing this kids' book. Scoot McNeary has been added. This is Javier Bardem, Constance Wu are, are in the movie of the Lyle Lyle Crocodile. So we added Scoot McNeary there. And then Good Omens. We're bringing back another season of this. Uh, and you know, this was David Tennant uh, did this. John Hamm was in there as Gabriel. Well, John Hamm will be back again as Archangel Gabriel. They have cast two new angels, one from hell, one from from heaven. Uh, Quillen Sepulveda, excuse me, uh, it might be Quillen, excuse me, if I mispronounce that, and Liz Carr. Thank you, Liz, for having such a shorter name to even that out. They will be the two new angels for Good Omens Season 2, I guess. Uh, I do know, you know, the first one was completely from the written material. This one, not whatsoever. Uh, this is going to be totally original, something different, just in the same world, but totally different original prize. No word on if David Tennant or what's his name are going to be in it. We do know that John Hamm will be back. All right, that wraps up the casting couch. On to a what's in the glass. It's Christmas time, which means eggnog. Uh, I am a big eggnog fan. I mean, like, drink it straight. Doesn't virgin, if you will, doesn't need to have the booze. And I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, eggnog, that's booze. That's a boozy Christmas drink." No, I just drink that for breakfast, right? <laughs> Which is gross and fattening. Have you seen my waistline? Yep, it's bulking season. You're allowed to be chubby. It's bulking season. That's an excuse. Um, I know a lot of people just spiced rum. Captain Morgan is a go-to. Find your favorite bourbon. Uh, my wife loves Calvassier in her eggnog. Yeah, we did that one time because we were totally out of booze. And I think I was in a glass this last Christmas season. Calvassier in your eggnog. Give it a whirl. But I would like to introduce you folks to a Maryland nog. 
This is the Maryland style eggnog. The Maryland nog consists of your favorite eggnog and then a little bit of Sagamore rye. Ooh, rye with the nog? It gives it a kick, man. It gives it a kick. Uh, you know, a good rye should give it a kick. You know, you have to like that taste for a good rye that has that aftertaste, that little bite at the very end there. Sagamore does do it. I had uh, some Sagamore double oak the other day. I said, let's give it a whirl here. Let's throw that Sagamore double oak barrel into the eggnog. And boy, oh boy, did I enjoy it. So I call it a Maryland nog. I don't know if anybody else has ever invented that, but I'm inventing it. The Maryland Nog, uh, using Sagamore. I say that Sag it's Maryland because Sagamore is from the great state of Maryland, greatest state in the union, best flag, that's for darn sure. Uh, try it today. When you're having your eggnog this evening, throw a little Sagamore rye into there and give it a whirl. It gives you a little bit of an extra bite. I would say on this one, shy away from rimming the glass with Old Bay. I know us Marylanders, we do love our Old Bay on everything. Uh, maybe this round we shy away. Uh, I don't think that, you know what, just for the F of it, maybe tonight I'll give it a try. We'll rim the glass with Old Bay, put in the eggnog. See, now it just sounds like too many ingredients. Sometimes you just, simple as best. Either way, Maryland Nog, Sagamore Rye with your eggnog. That's my vote. All right, all done with your what's in the glass. Now it's time for some Hollywood news. Did anybody watch Cowboy Bebop? I know the answer. It's no, because they've already canceled season two. No chance we're getting a second season. Uh, guys, I had zero interest in this. If any of you guys out there did, you want to chit-chat about it and tell me why I should have. But you're not getting a season two out of it because nobody watched. Nobody out there watched it, and they canceled that thing. Quick. Kingsman. Uh, excuse me. Kingsman. One word. Episode three. Uh, is now filming in September of 2022. Taron Edgerton will be back. They'll be bringing back some people who are still alive to do the third part of that trilogy. King's Man comes out this weekend, so they wanted to announce that The Kingsman Part 3 will be coming out. And of course, King's Man is a prequel to the Kingsman series. I really enjoyed Kingsman. Kingsman Part 2 was fine. Not amazing. I'm hoping that 3, they kind of not retcon, but kind of like see where they went wrong with that one. They maybe got a little too cheesy with the second one. And then circle back and kind of bring it back to the original style. I've heard some decent things. Now, original reviews for King's Man were not great. But as we've gotten closer to it, I'm hearing some much better reviews. So I'm looking forward to seeing that regardless of other people's reviews. Uh, Jeff Garland has left the Goldbergs over some issues, some on-set con misconduct uh, accusations that have come his way. Uh, I don't think he's helping himself because he did a stand-up routine like two days before he decided to leave the show and he bashed the Goldbergs and bashed the entire production process. So, Jeff, um, you're not helping your case any by bashing these people and then leaving them and then them saying, well, yeah, we have misconduct issues with you, buddy. So be it. Uh, so I don't know where the show Goldbergs is from there. Our winner of the of the uh, giveaway, of the Spider-Man giveaway, Shy, does a Goldbergs podcast completely devoted to that show. So I'm very intrigued, their thoughts on where they go from there with their show and what's going to happen to that, just that show in general, because I know a lot of people really liked it. There's a rumor. I'm going to do the rumor first. There's a heavy rumor that Harrison Ford has filmed more scenes as Han Solo for projects that are coming on Disney Plus for Star Wars. Now, the timeline of Book of Boba Fett, which is upcoming, and the timeline of uh, Mandalorian and all that, we're talking a much younger Solo. Very, 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 very younger Solo. This is not post-Force Awakens or, or what have you. So even if you're getting a Force Ghost Solo or something, you know, that's not happening there. So I don't know what he would be filming unless we're de-aging. Also, we know he's entrenched in Indy Part 5. He keeps getting injured and they keep pushing it back. So we know he's busy filming Indy 5. It's a rumor. I just thought I'd put it out there just for fun. Aaron Sorkin makes some comments that I agree upon. And he said... um, all of these castings that we're doing lately where we – he caught a little bit of flack uh, in some, some some castings because Javier Bardem is uh, Spanish and Ricky Ricardo is Cuban. And he has been the Ricardos coming out here. And he got caught some flack. Why didn't you cast a Cuban actor? And he said what I'm very glad he, that he said. He said because I needed to cast the right actor for the role. Being Cuban doesn't make you the best person to be in this Cuban role. And he, he went down, he, you know, he then doubled down on it saying, you know, we are doing this a lot lately where people are upset that they didn't cast an actually gay character to play a gay or a gay person to play a gay character or a 
or in those realms. And I agree with him on this one. Now, you know, you're you're walking a cultural thing where people didn't want to cast black actors to voice over black characters. I understand that. And then you're doing your racially sensitive sensitive things in Hank Azaria doing the Apu character. That was more making fun of that culture. Good. Get rid of that. That's that I'm on there. But from the actor's perspective, the best actor for the role should be the one they get it. Now, we, we shouldn't be doing black facing and whitewashing and, and, and that. No, those are bye bye. But if we have an actor who fits that character and is the best actor for the job, this is where he comes in. He says, these are the mother of empty gestures to say, well, I need this person to be Cuban because that character was Cuban. No, you don't. You need the best actor for the job. But granted, you're not going to cast Mahershala Ali to play, you know, uh, Ricky Arnez uh, or Desi Arnez. Excuse me. You're, you're right. So Javier Bardem, he looks Cuban. He's he actually, you know, very close to that culture. And he was the best actor for that job. This is the line that they're walking. He also then doubled down and said that Gina Carano should never have been fired just for being a Republican and having her views. Um, he said he fully can rebuke some of the things that she said, but she shouldn't have lost her job over it. I agree with that too. I don't, I'm not going to sit here and get on my politics, say whether or not I agree with Carano mm -mm, uh, and some of the things that she said, but she shouldn't be losing her job over her own freedom of speech. And, and that's where Sorkin went down that road too. He was like, people are allowed to speak both sides of the ball. They shouldn't be losing their jobs as long as we're not hurting people. So he doubled down in that realm. The parts where I agree with Sorkin is for the actors. Folks, we should be going after the best actors for the role. You don't need a gay person to play a gay character, right? It, it, and and sometimes that's that's the crux of these castings. And I feel bad for casting agents going forward because now they are under fire. Well, I can't hire this actor because of this. Well, yes, you can because they're the best performer for your job, for your production that you're trying to put forward. I just bumped the entire video so you YouTube watchers uh, just got a little shaky cam footage. All right. Not enough belaboring that. I, I, I'll provide the link for Sorkin's comments if you guys want to dive deeper onto that. But that's going to wrap up our Hollywood news. Let's move on. It's Christmas time. Christmas time. We are counting in our house. Uh, we've done this for the past like three, four years. How many times we hear Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You. I believe as of this recording, we are up to 82 times. From Thanksgiving to Christmas. How many times do we hear that song? My wife, my daughter, and I. And we're at 82. We might get 100. <laughs> I don't know why we're happy about it. We should count other songs too because I feel like there's some other ones out there that's, wow, I've heard this one 97 times, but yet I haven't heard Straight No Chasers 12 Days of Christmas yet, which is phenomenal. I love that live performance from those guys. Anywho, top five Christmas movies of all time. Apologies to Miracles on 34th Street, either renditions. Uh, apologies to either the animated Grinch or the live action Grinch with Jim Carrey. Enjoy all those films. Apologies to our childhood frosty rudolph the claymations the animateds you know even the animated grinches love them grew up on them apologies to jingle all the way because that almost made it onto my list and it should have and apologies to batman returns which is a phenomenal christmas movie uh and it did not make the list number five the santa claus tim allen this one is one of my more quoted movies again cancel culture i know there's folks who hate tim allen now but sorry i still love this movie there are lines from this movie that i still quote like on the daily my uh, daughter has a friend named veronica and then another friend's mom is named veronica and anytime they get mentioned in any conversation or the name veronica ever gets brought up there's the scene where he's naughty and nice and he's like timmy naughty tommy nice veronica very nice so anytime we hear the word veronica i would say very nice uh amongst a thousand other quotes from the santa claus fantastic film Rewatched it already twice this season it makes my number five number four i think is a movie that still gets slept on and that's home alone i think people just forget how much they loved Home Alone as a kid or just how good of a Christmas movie it is and how much heart it has. You think, oh, Home Alone, yeah, that kid's movie. Well, hello, Christmas films, what do you want? And B, I just think people forget how solid and quality that movie is. I mean, you've got Joe Pesci, of all people, sitting here playing a crime, a crime boss? No, playing a cat burglar and he's delivering phenomenal performance in here and phenomenal lines. Um, uh, uh, top to bottom, the actors and performances that they have in here. Did you guys know that John Candy filmed all of his scenes in one day? He only had one day to do it, so they did all the John Candy stuff in, in one whole day. That's pretty awesome. 
Number three, It's a Wonderful Life. Um, it's a Wonderful Life is a staple in our house growing up. It's one of, if not my mom's favorite movie of all time. It's definitely her favorite Christmas movie, and we used to always watch it. So as a kid, I was like, all right, it's a wonderful life song. We're going to watch it again. Every time my bell rings. All that crap, right? Shied away from it, moving out of the house. Just didn't watch as much. And then a couple of years ago, I actually watched it, watched it, like sat down. Didn't just have it on while I was rapping stuff. Like we sat down and actually watched it. And this is as an adult. Buddy bawled my eyes out like i'm bawling my eyes out of the end just like you know you grow up you become an adult and some of the things mean more to you than they meant as a kid and you're just like oh my god george bailey i love you man i want to hug you i'd be dumping my wallet into the bowl at the end too you know um zuzu's pebbles uh just a gorgeous film the only christmas movie that you know makes me tear up in any capacity towards the end two christmas story adore christmas story absolutely love it arguably the most no second most quotable i think i rank these quotable uh, Ralphie was just like so relatable as a kid. Just like, I totally get Ralphie. Totally get one of my favorite seasons when he comes home. He's checking for the secret decoder ring, looks in the mailbox, finds it, shuts the mailbox, doesn't bring in the other mail. I was like, the dude left the rest in the mail. Who cares? He needs the decoder ring. I don't know why I thought that was the best part. It was an underrated part. Anyway, Christmas Story comes in number two. And then number one, it'll never be beaten for me, is National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Clark Griswold is my spirit animal. The decorations that I do in my home for all holidays, I think, what would Clark Griswold do? What would he do here? The ultimate family man. Like, I, when I adhere the type of father I want to be in my life, it's like my own dad, Clark Griswold number two. Like, this is the type of – because the man is just so focused on his family. And does he go over the top? Does he – are his eyes bigger than his heart? Yes. Like, all those things. And I, I adhere to that in my own life. And I do that. I've already goofed up things in our Christmas celebrating where I'm like <laughs> – I built it up in my head. I tried to get it too big and it just didn't go through. And then, but it's still at its disappointment was still amazing type thing. And that's why I absolutely adore Clark Griswold. The, the one liners in this movie are bar none incomparable to some of the other films out there. They're fantastic. You know, cousin Eddie's great, but then we don't talk, you know, we talk about, Griswold and we talk about cousin Eddie, but then we don't talk about Beverly D'Angelo enough. I, I just, you know, rewatched it of course for this year. And I'm just watching Beverly D'Angelo's performance and the subtleties, you know, when she's getting hugged by Clark and then the in-laws or whatever at the same time, and her head's just like stuck in between. And she's just got the eyes like looking left and right and smiling. Um, you know, they get, tra- the cops all come in and she's like hugging him and then her hand is on his crotch or whatever. She goes to shake hands and puts it right back on his crotch. Just good stuff, man. Absolutely love it. All right, Christmas Vacation number one. My top five, Santa Claus, Home Alone, Wonderful Life, Christmas Story, and then uh, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Absolutely adore those films. We're not going to get into the debate, folks, here. Um, I did look up, like, as I was going through, I was like, let me look up a couple of top ten lists for just from other folks, just in case I'm I'm omitting a, a film that I shouldn't have been omitting. And anytime I saw that action movie with Bruce Willis, I was just like, you're out, you're out. You're out. You guys are idiots. Anyone that thinks that that movie is, come on, get out of town. It's not a Christmas movie. Get lost. Goodbye. That's going to wrap up our uh, Christmas talk and our Hollywood news on to DC discussion. Hope I didn't lose any listeners on those thoughts, on, on, on either of those thoughts there. But sorry, that's I feels how I feels. It's not a Christmas movie. It's just simply not. The have been there have been releases for the Batman, which is coming out March fourth. New footages, especially over in Japan, where it looks like the Riddler knows the identity of Batman and he's going to be messing with him. All right, cool. I'm now at the level where I don't need to see any more trailers for this. I don't need anything else. I'm already sold. I'm already going to watch it. I'm already very excited for it. March fourth can't come here fast enough. I'm ready to rock and roll and see the Batman. Uh, but bat uh, but, excuse me. In that world, not in that world. Cripes. In that world, Colin Farrell has been said to he will return. His Penguin will return in The Batman Part 2. So, already looking forward to a Part 2. Is it going to happen? According to Colin Farrell, he will be back to reprise the Penguin in Batman Part 2. I have a feeling we're not going to get a ton of Penguin in this. Like, a little bit and like, oh, he'll take, you know, going forward. Because we got so much of him in the trailer, you know? Like, that might be all of his scenes type thing. Um, in the Batman realm, J.K. Simmons is ready to start filming for Batgirl. He's going to start filming that soon, and so we're going to get his Commissioner Gordon in that Batgirl world. Interesting, because that's Snyderverse. We're meddling there, but who cares? Gotham Knights series. The Gotham Knights is coming to the CW. You're going to get their own series. That's awesome. Uh, intrigued what we're going to do. Yay, more Batman stuff. Woohoo! The Blue Beetle live-action movie that originally was just going to be on HBO Max. No. We're bringing that to theaters. August 18th, 2023. Got a release date, and it's going to be in theaters only at this moment. 
that's awesome. Good. That means they have enough uh, faith in that project. Henry Winkler is going to be Black Ad- in Black Adam. He's playing Al Pratt. Excuse me. He's playing Al Pratt, who is the original Adam. And he will be in this, obviously, as older, maybe some mentor thing, or we're going to see him in the flashback realm. I'm not sure, but he is in the Black Adam movie. That is cool. That is it for DC discussion. On to the Marvel Minute. All right, now to the Marvel Minute. All right, uh, Quisada, one of the big-time producers and big guys in uh, Marvel Minute has, or excuse me, in Marvel, excuse me, uh, has said that he gives his blessing for the Punisher and John Bernthal being the Punisher going forward. I mean, anybody would be an idiot who, even if that series wasn't fantastic, Bernthal as Punisher is fantastic. And every time he was on screen as Punisher, does a great job. And and yes, do I am I biased towards Bernthal because I love him? Mm-hmm. But oh well. Uh, anybody that noticed a fun little edit there in between, you're welcome. Or if you didn't notice the edit, woohoo, I'm doing an okay job here. The Russos are the ones who are rumored right now for Secret Wars. Now, the Russos, after Endgame said they'll be done, they're not going to do any more Marvel projects, uh, but they might be getting them back in to do Secret Wars if we have Secret Wars films. I mean, that seems to be the direction that Marvel is leaning, is getting into that Secret Wars realm. So why not bring back the Russos? They would be the ones I would pick. That's for darn sure. Okay, done with the Marvel Minute. Done with our show. Now it's time to go forward. Loaded. Loaded. Absolutely loaded, you guys. Uh, so be ready. Here we go. In theaters. Don't forget, Nightmare Alley is still out. I still do want to see that. I'm getting around to trying to see that, especially because uh, I think we might need to for award season and stuff. So that might be a review next week, 272. The King's Man. I'm looking forward to that. That releases into theaters this week. Matrix Resurrection also releases into the theater this week. Also, that releases on HBO Max on the 22nd. Tragedy of Macbeth, that releases. That's a little limited, though, folks, so check your theaters. It might not be in your area. I do apologize if it is not. But Tragedy of Macbeth, big Oscar player, probably. American Underdog, this is the Kurt Warner story. Uh, That's releasing into theaters. Journal for Jordan, getting some decent love right now. Uh, kind of low on the list, but a lot of folks are looking forward to that. And then Sing 2. These are all theater releases coming out this weekend, right? They said, we'll take on Spider-Man weekend number two. Like, how many of these ones were like, ugh, we don't want to go up against Spidey. Let's just push it back a week. And then I was like, oh, now I'm up against Kingsman and Matrix and Macbeth and American Underdog and Sing 2. So, Christmas weekend, right? Big weekend, big weekend for money. That is why. And for the folks that didn't see Nightmare Alley, that is why I feel Spidey won't have such a big weekend number two return. If all of this was not there, I would say that Spidey would get less than a 50% deduction, you know, uh, in, in half next weekend. Whereas you would see it make 125, which is, you know, one, 50% or more next weekend. Because we have so many options here, and Christmas is on an actual Saturday. That, that's where I don't think Spidey will make that big of a return. Will it make a lot of money next week? Yes. But it will it be closer to like 80 mil? Probably. Who's going to win next week? Your guess would be Matrix, but that's on HBO. I'll be honest, folks. I'm probably watching that on HBO. I know. A lot of you just audibly gassed. Maybe crashed your car. I'm probably going to watch that. There. King's Man, is that going to draw money away? Mm, maybe. Macbeth, that's not drawing any money away. Sorry. American Underdog, probably not. Sing 2, hmm. Okay, Sing 2 is going to draw some cash away because I think a lot of people want to see Sing 2. I really enjoyed Sing 1, thought it was great. Looking forward to Sing 2, so are the family. Now, if you don't want to leave your house, Amazon Prime on the 21st, which as you're listening to this, uh, is being the Ricardos. Boom, you're going to want to knock that out immediately because coming up, you have all these movies to see this weekend. On Netflix, don't look up. Now, this is not getting as many good reviews as some people thought it was going to be. A lot of people early on thought this was going to be a huge Oscar player, and I think that momentum has died down. Either way, you have a load of cast leading, you know, by Leo and all of them, so don't look up. Looking forward to that. That comes out also midweek. Over on to Disney+, Plus, as I mentioned earlier, Encanto is available. Interesting that they drop Encanto the same week that Sync 2 is in theaters. What's Disney trying to do there? Or do they not care either way? They're just like, whatever, we're going to give this runtime and then put it on Disney+. Plus. So Encanto is now there, and then the finale of Hawkeye, which we're talking about here in the Marvel world, right? We go that episode five, Hawkeye, Spider-Man, two days later, finale, Hawkeye, four days later. I mean, they tell you to call your doctor if some drugs last more than four hours. What are we talking about here if we're talking about for like eight days? Yikes, I might need to call somebody. Because 
I'm very much looking forward to this finale of Hawkeye on Wednesday when that finally drops. I mean, yes. Yes, 100% yes. So what are we going to see next week? I, guys, I, I honestly don't have an answer for you. Don't look up being the Carter's Matrix. Those are all streaming. I will watch those this week because A, they're streaming. B, they're streaming earlier than the weekend. C, Hawkeye, 100%. So there's four for you guys next week that... I will have at the very least. And and they're big ones. Right? Don't look up Ricardo's and Matrix. Those are big ones right there. And then Hawkeye will be wrapping that one up as well. Can I get to the King's Man? Can I get to Nightmare Alley? I'm going to definitely try. And can I get to Sing 2? Maybe. Probably Sing 2 would be the number one on that. What are you guys looking forward to next week? What are you guys going to see? Eight, uh, six, six, seven. Eight. <laughs> I don't know my own phone number. Eight, six, six, seven. There's no eight, Brian. Six, six, seven, three, six, five, eighty two, fifty three is the phone number. You can text or leave me a voicemail. Get punchy after an hour of talking here. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Letterbox. Follow the show. Take two podcasts spelled T O O uh, across all the board. And don't forget on Facebook, you also have the group page where there's more interactive things on there and we can chit chat and fans actually get to chit chat amongst each other in there as well. Uh, please follow across all of the socials. Ratings and reviews are mucho appreciado. Please send them our way. Do not mind whatsoever. Uh, a nice five star rating review. Hey, maybe it's Christmas. Hey, huh? Huh? Merry Christmas. Congratulations again to Shy for being the big winner. We will have another giveaway just after the New Year. Find something to give away, and hopefully more of you guys jump on board as well for episode 271. Thanks for sticking around for this lengthy up. Have a great night, everybody.